I took this 3D AI model here to the next level by refining it with a few simple steps you can do entirely for free. In today's video, I will show you five effective ways how you can improve your 3D AI models. You will learn how to make your 3D model topology way better, how you can give them proper UVs and reapply details to their texture in Blender, as well as how you can upscale and refine your textures and shape details. By the end of this video, you will be able to transform your existing 3D AR model into a high quality model that you can use later on then in your own projects. Having said that, let's dive right into it. Hey guys, I'm Philip from Pixel Artistry and welcome back to the channel. So as I said already, in today's video, we will have a look how we can transform our 3D model. And we will start in Blender for this one. And as you can see, I already imported a 3D model into Blender. The usual way how you can do that as in each video I'm showing is that you go here to file, import, and most of the times we have a GIB file. So you simply click here and then you will import your 3D model. Otherwise, as you can see, I imported your I got this from Trico and uh, I will show you in the next video which will launch then a week afterwards how you can generate for free in Trico now because there was a huge update but anyways to get started here as you can see we have a really great base already with this model but as you can see when I go here to the texture mode and otherwise as well when we go to the wireframe as you can see it's triangulated to be honest it could be way better first thing we want to do is now to improve the topology on our mesh and I will show you two options there. There is the free option, which I will show you first. And there is the kind of paid option. You still have a trial version. In terms of detail, it works better in terms of the topology itself. So the first free option I wanted to show you is called Q Remeshify. And this is a completely free add-on that you can simply install on your own PC for Blender. And for this one, the only requirement that we need is that we have Blender 4.2 or above installed. And as always, of course, Blender is free, so you can simply just install the latest version and what you will need to do to install the add-on is that you go simply over here i will put the link in the video description as always and as well you can then go here to the download button over here and then it will go to the gum road and it says here five dollars but of course you can also put here a zero and then say i want this and then you can simply download it to your pc only thing you need to do then it's really straightforward is that you go here to edit preferences then you go here to the little arrow on the top right and say install from disk and then you will choose the zip file that you will have so go here to the query mesh file that you just installed it needs to be the zip file so don't un unzip it or something it it's working straight out of the box like this and you can say here install from disk and then you can search for the add-on which is here the query remesh file that you have over here make sure that it's installed and then you can simply press n in the viewport and go down here and here you will see that we have a query mesh file. First thing we want to do is we want to change some settings about it because this is working way better in my opinion. Go here to the sharp detect angle and we will change it to 25. As well, we will turn on symmetry so it gets basically mirrored over to the other side and we will change the density to two. And then only thing we need to do is click here on remesh. This is kind of the result that we have. So for this side, which is kind of decent, I think, of course, it's not the best topology ever. So you can definitely play around with those settings over here as well. For example, for background objects, this could already work um, kind of, and this is a bit of a more complicated mesh. So I will also show you in a second the other way, which is in my opinion, uh, gives a way better topology. In case you're happy with that, otherwise you can of course always regenerate is that you then need to go to the modify here because it mirrors it over to the other side. So only thing you need to do is then hit apply here and then you will have a full mesh. By the way, in some cases it will error when the name is a bit strange. So when the name is something like a Really confusing name like this here on the top then sometimes the add-on will error so just uh, make sure then to rename it to something proper and then it should work and first thing we need to do to make it a bit faster is that we go here to the decimate uh, tool that we have over here then we go to a ratio about 0 0.25 something like this when we go back to the edit mode apply and as you can see we have now a 
much lower density of the triangles itself. And once we have then the mesh that is a bit more triangulated and low poly, what we can do then is again go in here, say maybe for this one that we turn off the symmetry and go with a density of two, um, make sure that the pre-process is still enabled and go to remesh. All right, and for the second option, which is the kind of paid option, but you have a free trial if you want to test it out. So this is the quad remesher tool. I also showed in my previous video because I'm really a big fan of this tool. And only thing you need to do to actually install it is go here and then to buy quad remesher and then you can purchase it over here. If you want to test the tool first, you can also go here to quad remesher, download, and then you can here uh, download a trial version, which is limited to 30 days. Anyways, if it, when you have it installed, you can also um, yeah directly install the, the zip file like with the other tool I showed you. And then you can go here to preferences again, install from this, install then the tool, and then you will see it over here by quad remesher bridge. And then you simply just need to install it over here to get the add-on. And what you can do then is that you go here to N and then we go here to the quad remesh and then we can go here from the adapter size a bit lower. We can also change here the quad size. So maybe let's say 2,500. Um, otherwise we can leave it as it is. And then we go here to remesh it. And as you can see, it's blazing fast because it already uh, remeshed the tool for us. As you can see, it's not working right now because I first need to merge the vertices again. So I will delete this tool again, unhide the original geo that we have, go tap, right click, merge vertices by distance and then we go here and I say something like 3 1 and as you can see it already removed a lot of vertices remesh it as you can see we have now a really nice retopologized mesh which is working great it's keeping the shape from the original one that we have here as you can see we are losing some details but we will fix that in a second once we have done that we want now to fix the UVs on our retopologized mesh so I will also show you a quick way how you can do that and this tool is also pretty amazing and for free. We can install a UV unwrapper tool, which is called Ministry of Blender. So only thing you need to do is first to download the add-on and we can do that by first going up here to the code and then simply going here to download zip. The other file we need to download for this is going here to the Ministry of Flat website and then go here to download. Then we can go back into Blender go again here to edit preferences go here to install from disk and then we will choose here the file that we need in this case it's the blender mof and then we can go here to install from disk and as you can see here it is the blender wrapper for mof uv and wrapper will show up then and we need here to then plug in the other zip file which we downloaded um, from the other page so you will simply then search for the other zip file and simply select it in here and only thing you need to do then which is also very straightforward so we can go to our uv editing over here press here n go then to blender mof and if everything worked correctly you should see here then the option to auto uv unwrap make sure that you're here in the object mode and then you can choose here the texture resolution let's say in our case it's a 2k texture and then you simply can hit click here on auto uv unwrap and then when we want to view it we go into the edit mode hit a create a new texture when we assign now a new material which we need to do anyways so on the retopologized mesh that we have over here we go here to the minus button and then we will go to new new material and then we can also unlink it here go to new and then you go new image and now as we can see these are our new uv tiles and they look way better than what we would get from the original smart uv project from blender all right great and once we have given now our 3d model a better topology and clean new uvs what we will do now is project the texture back from our original model so what we will do then is that we go back to the original one that we have here and blend it on here we would drag this one in the scene collection that it's on the same level as the geometry we can also get rid of this one here so i will also simply delete this one and what we can do then is that we go here also in the texture mode what you can change over here so this one is the high detail and let's say this one is the low detail 
so far. So the low detail is our remeshed one and the high detail is the original one that we have. And then what we will do is we go here to the render settings, go here render engine to cycles. And what we can do then is go here below to the bake option, simply select then here the diffuse option that you have. And then you can turn off the direct and indirect color. Go here to select it to active and change here the extrusion to 0.01. And one last thing we need to do now is that we now open a new window that you can simply drag and drop here. Go then to your shader editor. And then as you can see, there's a new material already. We need then to assign a new image texture so you can simply type that in here by pressing shift and a go here to new call it color or let's say diffuse this is also our color texture let's leave it at 2k go to new image hook up this one to the principal bsdf as you can see if it worked correctly then we have now here a black shader on it then we can finally bake our texture onto our mesh so what we will do is go 2D, uh, first through the high detail, then the low detail. You can always make sure that it works when you see this one here selected. We can also make sure to select this one if you want to really make sure, but otherwise uh, simply just select high detail, low detail. See that we have the diffuse here open. Make sure that you have set it here to cycles and CPU because on GPU it won't work unfortunately. And then we can simply go here, press bake. And once this is done, we can then hide the high detail model again. And as you can see, we have now all this detail from our high model onto the low one and with a new topology, which is really cool. Next thing we want to do now is that we uh, add additional detail to our mesh. And there are two ways that how you can do that actually. So the first way is quite straightforward that we bake the detail that we had on our high original mesh onto the low one using a normal map. And this is also pretty straightforward. So only thing that you need to do is go again and uh, create here a new image texture, which can be this one. Create here a new texture, let's call it normal map and go here to new image, create a normal map over here so we can plug it in properly. Then let's hook up the color to this one and then to our normal slot. And then what we can do is again going in here, select first the high detail, then the low detail, change here the mode to normal and we can leave everything as it is from this one. And then we will bake all the detail that we had on the low mesh onto the high one and then we can simply hide this one here again and when we now view our normal color and we can simply do that by hooking up the color into the surface to see if it worked and as you can see now the normal detail is also baked into our mesh so we can use this in our shader then to be plugged in here in case you would like to have sculpting detail or additional detail into your base mesh for example if you want to 3d print your AI mesh. Then what you can do then is that we go into the sculpting mode over here. And what you can do then is first that make sure that we have here the original model. What you will do then is that you go simply and hit here um, shift and D. Then you can hide this one. Then we can first add a subdivision modifier here. So we can go subdivision surface. You have to be here in the modifiers tab. Then you can add here, for example, three subdivisions. Then what we will do is add an additional modifier, which is the displace modifier, what we will have here. And what we will do then is first select here a new texture. Then you can change it as well here to UVs. And let's say here normal then we need a UV map for this. We can select this one and what we will do then is as well that we go here to the texture map down below. Then we go here to new, uh, say here something like, I don't know, displace. And what we will do here is then go to open, select then our color map that we have over here, saved. And as you can see, it starts displacing then the detail. And this is of course way too much. So what you can do is go back to the displace modifier, go here and change the mesh to something really low. So maybe 0.01. And as you can see, it's giving us very nice details then on the mesh itself. It's really about finding a kind of angle that works for you. Um, to have then the details into your mesh and to 
then extract it later to uh, 3D print it, for example. Make then, of course, always sure to apply the subdivisions here in case you want to 3D print it. Otherwise, you can also leave it as it is right now in case you want to uh, just render it. Next step now is to fix our texture kind of. And um, I will go on with this one here because I will add most of the details in the shader, which I will show you also in a second. So first, we would like to fix our diffuse texture kind of. How we can do this is also very straightforward. We go here into the texture paint mode, for example. And then what we can do is as well that we go here and select the clone brush that we have over here. Then we go shift, for example, over here, setting here the strength. Make sure that you are on texture paint as here. And then you can start painting mistakes out that you don't want to have. So simply make sure that you have the clone brush selected and then you can yeah, paint all the issues or mistakes that you might don't want to see in the texture. For example, here's a spot which is kind of weird. And the great thing is because we fixed our UVs, we won't have this uh, kind of weird seams anymore. And it will work way better than um, with the outer UV wrap uh, that we had from the default 3D AI model. So this is great and we can work with way better UVs now. Once you're kind of happy with your texture paint details, make sure as always to save here the image, which is really important. Otherwise it won't be shown and will disappear. The last and final step is now to bring it to the final rendering. And here I personally add the most kind of magic, I would say, or detail to our model, because here you can do a lot of things to really improve it. It's actually really simple. So first we will go to the render engine over here. Also, we will switch it from cycles, CPU to GPU. If you have a um, strong graphic card or a stronger graphic card, then I can always recommend to go to the GPU compute. So first thing, as uh, mentioned before, is we want to apply our normal map that we have. So this is what we baked. So we can simply plug it in here and then we will have additional detail. So we can also change the strength if it's too much, for example. So we'll set this to 0 0.5. And I will as well make sure to add also here a subdivision surface. You can also go here, right click and uh, hit shade smooth so we are sure that the normals are also smooth that we want to use. Next thing we want to do then is to add a bump map as well because this will give us additional surface details to our mesh so we can go here into the bump one then we will plug in the normal map into the normal slot of the bump and then we go here and add a U saturation node then we will plug in the color into the U situation value node and go here into the height one. And we will plug in this one into the normal one. We will then change the saturation to zero because we need a kind of black and white map that we can see here for the bump to work. And then we can again go here and plug it into the surface. And then of course we want to decrease the strength because it's way too much. This one will control the strength of the normal and this strength here will control the strength of the overall bump. You see how much detail it's uh, get added here, which is really great. I always like to use noises to break up the surface a bit so that it feels more natural and more realistic. So what we will do is that we have our noise over here. We can also preview it if we want. We can then change it also and plug in a color ramp in between. So we have black and white values. And then we can, for example, change the scale that we have a bit more breakup onto our mesh itself. We can also change the detail a bit. And what we can also do is that we then change and plug in the color ramp into our roughness over here and change it to surface. And then we will have a better breakup kind of of the roughness itself. One last thing I still would like to do is adding a displacement map. So what we can do is also say here displacement, then go in here, plug in the displacement over here. We can also go again and take the U saturation into the height over here, height detail. What we can do then as well is go here and change the scale to zero dot. Yeah, maybe let's go even lower, something like this, 0 0.01. 
can also change the level viewport render as well to make it a bit more high res. So something like this could work potentially. And as we can see, we have now a fully highly repolarized mesh with better UVs and with higher detail. And uh, yeah, can be used then in uh, in your projects later. As always, take this with a grain of salt. It's of course not at a high production level quality like you see in the VFX industry, for example, but this can be serving as well really great for personal projects already to speed up your process and um, yeah make awesome projects with it so having said that i really hope you enjoyed this video let me know down below if you have any questions as always and actually see you on the next one